Hey guys, welcome to Power Up. I am Alex Aspen, and today I'm going to show you the Sonus Beam, this smart sound bar with Alexa commands. The Sonos Beam is a new kind of soundbar. It's not just another long speaker, but a more complete device that can control some of your TV functions, give you weather updates, and of course, play music, all at the command of your voice. As far as soundbars go, the Beam is as sleek as they come. Other than the ports for HDMI, Ethernet, and power, it has a couple of buttons for playback controls and volume at the top. And don't worry, it also has a button to silence microphone to protect your privacy. I mean, look at the simplicity in these round edges. It's such a smooth looking device. The beam is 25.6 inches long, 3.9 inches wide, and just 2.7 inches tall. It comes in either black or white. And if you compare it to other Sonos devices, it's actually pretty light. It weighs only six pounds, as opposed to say, the Sonos Play Bar, which weighs nearly twice as much. The compact design is one of the best qualities of the Beam. You can place this baby even in the smallest TV setups and you will still get that awesome home theater experience. The Sonos Beam is one of the first of its kind. It comes with Amazon Alexa support and that's what separates it from most of other soundbars. Setting this guy up is pretty simple. You just have to connect all the cables and download the Sonos app. Just remember that your TV must have an HDMI ARC input. It has to say ARC, which stands for Audio Return Channel, or the Beam won't be able to control the TV. After connecting to Wi-Fi, you simply follow the steps. The Beam will ask you to run TruePlay, a software that analyzes everything from the size of the room to its layout. The issue I have with TruePlay is that it's only available for iOS. Also, there's other devices like the Apple HomePod that tune themselves automatically. This one doesn't. But honestly, it's an easy step and it only takes you a few minutes. The TruePlay will also make you walk around the room with your phone, so that the app and your phone's mic can test how your room reflects sound waves. Pretty sophisticated stuff. Once it was all set up, I was able to confirm that the Beam has great sound for such a compact soundbar. It's not as powerful as its big brother, the Sonos Play Bar, but that one is not smart and goes for $700, while the Beam only costs $400. Of course, this soundbar was not only created for watching TV, but also to better your experience while listening to music. The Sonos Beam adjusts itself to better perform for either activity. For example, if you're watching your favorite TV show, the Beam gives priority to vocal clarity so you can better understand the dialogue. When playing music, it calibrates itself to pump out more bass and produce a wider sound. The quality of the sound is so much better than the one in the Amazon Echo. You can really blast music with this one. But now let's talk about the other aspect of the Sonos Beam, which is the smart aspect. Besides having all the Alexa commands, the Beam can also turn your TV on and off or adjust the volume. But don't retire your TV remote just yet, because the Sonos Beam can't change channels or switch the input, for example. Me? I keep losing the TV remote, so I was a bit disappointed with that. But the good thing is that I can still turn off the TV without moving a finger. The Sonos Beam may not be the perfect soundbar, but it is smart, which a lot of other soundbars are not. I tried the Beam in my living room and it honestly fit right in, literally. It sounds great and does away with bloated home theater setups, as any good soundbar should, but it also adds the convenience, all for $400. Besides saving space, the Beam plays nice with other smart devices. It takes priority by default so that no other devices around may start fighting with it for your attention. And that's it. That completes our full review for the Sonos Beam. I'll see you next time here on Power Up with a new cool device. And don't forget to watch us every Tuesday on our tech segment on Telemundo's Un Nuevo Día.